Hi, I'm Dietrich. Uh, I, um, initially, I was in RTC in college as a cadet, and then commissioned second lieutenant in 1989. And I served uh, until 1997, and then I was in the Ready Reserve. And I continued to work in, in the same area in defense at, at civilian companies afterwards. My first initial assignment in the Air Force was um, was actually really, really cool. I was on space shuttle um, launch crew for the inertial upper stage program. Where I worked, mental health was already a big topic of concern for the leadership. The pressures of leading a life where you're not telling your loved ones, your families, your those that are close to you, where you're going to be, when you're going to be back, you know, it, it's really invasive in your personal life, this, this type of tasking, this type of work specifically, you know, the mission. Um, and you think it's normal, that's fine, you know, that's, just, that's what you bought into and you think it's all right, but you felt the stress and every once in a while somebody would disappear and no one would know why or how. Um, when you worked, you often worked in a cell-like structure where you only worked with so many people and everyone else didn't have a need to know, so you were compartmentalized. I got out of the military in, in 97, I was 30 years old. And I kept going pretty hard, and I, and I think um, when I say pretty hard, I meant I kept working and, and keeping myself very, very busy and, and doing things. And so now that I'm uh, 45, I a lot of the things caught up with me that didn't catch up with me earlier. Because if you keep yourself really, really busy, um, a lot of these things might not surface and be that evident. At least in my case, they weren't. I think, really think it was just the years and years of, of being a machine, almost like water dripping very slowly, um, and just that bottled up, um, not being able to communicate out or, or share or feel like there's any, uh, others have the, feel the same way. And for me, the way um, it, it came out initially was um, through depression, and then f further down um, the line through uh, some anger, some frustration, bad dreams. They basically had a social worker at, at my place of work and you know I spoke with and talked to about my different areas and you know she took me about as far as she could and, and then told me that I would need to see uh, someone a professional. So I, I went to see um, this person. For me it was like that's I'm big you know military guy I don't need to go see someone like that's I mean I can Plus, I'm smart, I can read about this, I can figure this out on my own, I've got other friends, we'll, we'll, we'll figure this out, you know, how's she gonna help me? But okay, keep an open mind, go. And so we met um, at first once every week, and then once every two weeks, it was for, for about three and a half, four months. One takeaway was that it's not uncommon that other people have gone through this. We're just, you know, we had some, some, some things that you know, we couldn't talk to our wives about, couldn't talk to our girlfriends or, or friends or whatever. And, and so I think it was as simple as that, as, as seeking someone to bounce ideas off of and, and relieve some of that pressure and, and whatever form it takes to help fix um, those areas of depression and stress. For me, it's, it's that I can go throughout my day and, and not feel um, inflicted by or, or kept from doing the things that I want to do. One of the areas that really helped me out too was that um, I had friends that uh, weren't even military actually, they, they were civilians that, that have had traumatic brain injury, um, that have had bipolar, um, that have had their own PTSD. It's um, not just the military guys, but there's other people in the community too that have, have at least the same type of issues or, or similar issues um, that have great um, uh, groups that you can reach out and talk to and, and, and that will also motivate to um, perhaps go to certain uh, medical professionals for help.